welcome to the Daryl and Ryan show. special episode show. It is the show thing. Yes, we did confirm. <laughs> I don't know if you listened to us Sunday morning before church. We did confirm a podcast is whenever it's audio only. This is video unless you're just listening to it. Or do you know another way that you can make this a podcast? How so? If you're on, on YouTube right now watching us, close your eyes. You didn't do it. Close your eyes. Okay. Anyway, thank you, Daryl. Much better. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So what's on tap for today? All right. So uh, uh, let me tell you about uh, I had a cooking fiasco uh, last week. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I almost burnt the house where I'm staying, which I'm running from the church down. But yeah, that, yeah, that will have gone will have gone south. But okay. So uh, this is this is what happened. So. Uh, we were doing a youth group, a virtual youth group, and I was at my place, and for some reason, uh, internet connection wasn't that great, so I came over to the church, I was in my office, uh, you know, in the chat room for the service and, and everything, and while, while I was at the church, I put a pork tenderloin uh, in the oven, <laughs> and I had a timer and everything, so I thought everything was, I thought everything was going to be good. So you know, service is wrapping up and just looking at the chat room, it's kind of funny playing around with people. My timer never went off on my phone. (laughs) And I realized, oh no, this is bad. So I get home and I'm at home and I open the door. I can smell this this pork tenderloin burning (laughs) in the oven. It's kind of smoky in my house. That that house smokes up too. I used to live where Daryl lives. When it gets smoky, man, it is hard to vent that out. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, first I got an oven mitt and I took the pork tenderloin out of the oven and this thing is charcoaled on the top just burnt and I'm <laughs> opening windows and oh, man. you know so the funny thing is while I'm doing that there's this whole conversation going on in the chat room. I was in it yeah so we're still in the chat room meanwhile like I'm it's just me and a couple of the the students I think Wild Bill was still there and we're chatting I'm like where's Daryl like all of a sudden Daryl's just gone from the chat yeah, room yeah. so while all, that is, while all that's happening in the chat room I'm fighting trying to get this pork tenderloin <laughs> out of the oven by the time I come back it's like 25 minutes everyone's gone and I just I wrote I wrote like a stab reply is anyone there <laughs> dot 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 I almost burnt my house down dot 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 and no response <laughs> we had a good time in the chat room we we're talking about ice cream yeah yeah I think that's all we we're talking about I, I, I read ice about cream. everything how, that's good yeah, how much joy was in that chat room compared to my horror that's like the ultimate uh, FOMO if you're missing out like you can go back and read the chat <laughs> yeah. that you missed yeah I'm so sorry. I know a big question is, yes, I did eat that pork tenderloin. It was, it was all I had in my house. I just, I just scraped off like the burnt part. And, you know, it was it was a bit tough, but it, it was edible. <laughs> so you ate it? Yeah, it, it was edible. It was good. Nice. Decent. Hey, if you didn't know this, Daryl actually is a very good cook. I've had, uh, what, what all of it? Jambalaya? Uh, it jambalaya. Up? Jambalaya. Yeah. And what, we, we ate something a couple weeks ago. I made, uh, you know, steak, chicken. Yes. Oh, Baby, that was good. Yeah, I was glad I forgot lunch that day. It was Japanese because I poured mm. like yum yum sauce on it. That's yum, the only reason sauce. why it was Japanese. Sauce. But I'll tell you the reason why I had to start learning how to cook. When I first got here, it was just all fast food like Burger King, mm. Chick Fil A. It was like it was that that was it. That was like dream. my entire yeah my entire <laughs> meals. And it got to one point. It was after a youth group. I went out to the I went out to a restaurant and they were closed. And they, so I'm like, oh man, I'm starving. So I went to like Giant Eagle rest, uh, grocery store in town and I bought this chicken breast and I, I got home. I just stared at it for like 15 minutes. Like, <laughs> I have no, I, what am I going to do with this? So then, you know, I threw it in the oven and uh, okay, I wouldn't have fed that to anyone else, <laughs> but you know, uh, taking a risk of, uh, with my own life. Did but you look up a recipe or did you just throw it in the oven? I just threw it in the oven. See, see what happens here. Like, let's, let's play some games here. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that's what happened. And over a period of time, uh, my cooking's gotten decent. Yeah, absolutely yeah. it has. Mine has not. I can make frozen pizzas, and that's about Actually, this is kind of funny. Whenever uh, Laura and I were about ready to get married, I don't know if it was for her bridal shower or what, but she, they gave her this cookbook with all these recipes in it, homemade recipes. Um, I think the communion bread, the secret communion bread recipe was oh, in yeah, there. Yeah. And uh, my mom puts one in. It says, Ryan's favorite food. 
All she did was cut out the box of a Tony's pizza <laughs> and tape it on there. Because that's all I wanted when I was growing uh, up. I, I love Tony's pizza. It's uh, been a long time. <laughs> yeah. Can you get one of those today? Are you going to stop at Dry and Eagle and grab one? Uh, maybe I went on my way home. Yeah, you might. I don't know. Didn't oh, bring man. my mask. Have you been wearing a mask? I've been I, wearing a mask. Okay, this is kind of messed up. So yesterday I went out to Dry and Eagle and I didn't have a mask. So what did <laughs> I do? I, I took this old t-shirt and then I cut it up with scissors and... And made it like a little mask, and you know, I looked so ridiculous, like just driving down the road with this mask on. And it got to the point, I t I'm like, why am I wearing a mask in my car? And I, and I took it off, and then, and then I got to the grocery store, and I and I put the mask on, and you know, I, I'm paranoid because. One, I look ridiculous. I don't want anyone else to see me. And two, I feel like, okay, is someone gonna think I'm gonna rob this like grocery store because I have this mask on? I like, look like a bad guy from like a cartoon show. And it, yeah, it was it was rough. That's awesome. So if anyone wants to get Daryl an actual mask, yeah. just drop it off in the church mailbox. Maybe I don't I would, know. I would prefer that. I would prefer yeah. that. Yeah, I have an actual mask. My aunt made a bunch of us masks. So thanks, Aunt Karen, if you're watching. Uh, <laughs> the first time I tried to go out with a mask, I wore a scarf. I don't know how to wear a I scarf. I remember that. I remember yeah, that. I left the office. Yeah. I went to Mamie's, and the stupid thing blew off my face before <laughs> I even got inside. Oh. And then when I left, the wind was going like crazy. This was last Thursday, maybe. When I left, I'm pretty sure I lost my aviator sunglasses because the wind just took something. I don't even know what it took. Oh, oh man. man, I have to go to Walmart, but I need to put a mask on to go get my new sunglasses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's move on from that. Okay, so, uh, yeah, speaking of wind and everything, last Thursday we had a windstorm here on uh, Easter Sunday that evening. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I couldn't sleep, and um, th this is why, so... Uh, you know, uh, I'm not sure who's watching this or not, but I I'm a weird guy. Look, I have whiplash here and heads moving and everything and R2-D2 and just weird stuff. So Bigfoot, I watched a TV show about Bigfoot <laughs> Easter Sunday. That was my really big spiritual thing, watching <laughs> shows about Bigfoot. And, you know, whether it's real or not, you know, who, who knows? But there was this guy in, in Louisiana. You want to believe. Let's yeah, just be I honest. I want to believe. I want to believe. Yeah. You know, this guy in Louisiana, he, had, he was out hunting in this deer stand, and he said he saw, like, this, like, Bigfoot creature like coming up to him, like hitting a tree. It was howling and everything. And you know, he got out of the deer stand. He got his like little gun, but like in the show, they didn't have actual rifle. They had, they had a pellet gun because of like a budget, I guess. And anyways, oh, it was so, one of those like reenactments. Yeah, they like, reenacted the show. That's and like so dumb. You know, so the guy had his gun up and everything, and the creature's just howling. He's getting, he's getting really aggressive, and then he heard this whistling. Like in the woods, he said there was two Bigfoot. Yeah, it was like yeah. ah, like like that, and then, yeah, like ah, and then they were they were communicating with with each other. Wait, hold on. is the plural of Bigfoot big feet? I mean, sure, why so not? Two big, big feet. feet. Okay, yeah, two big feet. So like they're one, one's growling, the other one's whistling, and <laughs> the guy has his guns like looking all around, and he takes off running, and <laughs> as he's running, he's hearing ah. Behind him, and, you know, it's funny now, but it was, it was horrifying. I'm in my house, like all by myself, watching this, and <laughs> and you know, so he he got back in his car, and okay, okay, I, I can't believe this story a little bit until he he went back the next day to the same spot. And Ryan, do you know why he went back? Why did he go back, Daryl? Because his deer stand was really nice. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe you're a hunter, and maybe deer stands are that nice. But if I saw a supernatural. 10 foot giant ape that could whistle and howl. There's like a whole army of them. <laughs> well, I, big feet. Don't yeah, big, big feet. feet. Yeah. I, I let them uh, keep the nightstand. I, I wouldn't go back for it. <laughs> but you no, know, this guy did. <laughs> and he said it was like all destroyed and just completely leveled and everything. So, you know, I saw that show like at 10 o'clock. I'm mm. getting ready for bed an hour later. We have like all this wind just like howling. It was bad, yeah. Sunday night, Sunday night, so I couldn't sleep because every time I closed my eyes, I just kept on seeing like Bigfoot or Big Feet, like <laughs> just howling and growling. And then, you know, I open my eyes, I hear this wind going. <laughs> so it's like 3 a.m., but I'm just wide awake, just shaking. And 
and everything. It was it was, it was a rough night. So you'd close your eyes, see yeah, Bigfoot. Yeah, big see feet. Bigfoot. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Like when you get something stuck in your head like that. So like I, I haven't watched anything scary recently, but I've been playing this video game, and every time I close my eyes, I see the video game. So I've probably been playing a little bit too much. Okay. So, so what, what is this video? So game? all right. First of all, Super Nintendo. Did you have a Super Nintendo as a kid? Uh, I, I have the original Nintendo, original, and then I went yeah. to straight to Sega Genesis. Okay. See, I only had the Super Nintendo, and uh, I had a PlayStation, PlayStation too, but the Super yeah, Nintendo. Yeah. So there's this game I never had it as a kid because I didn't know it existed. It's called Michael Jordan, <laughs> Chaos in the Windy City. What? Yes. So I found out about this from there. I have too much time on my hands. When wait, I was watching. Hey, remember Michael Jordan last week? Wild Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was kind of like that. It was like that. Yeah. Oh man. So I'm watching this YouTube video called "It Was Like the Evolution of Michael Jordan in Video Games." I was like, "That's pretty interesting." I remember a time where they couldn't use them because of licensing or yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I saw player this game. Player 99. Yeah, player. <laughs> roster uh, player. He was, roster player. I hated that guy. I hated um, that so much. Anyway, if you don't know what we're talking about, sorry, we'll move on. But it, it says something about this video game came out in 1995 while Jordan's playing baseball, mind you, called Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City. So I did what any logical person would do. I Googled how can I play this online right now, <laughs> and I found it. So for the past, like, two or three weeks, I have been playing away at Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City. And you know what happened? last night Daryl oh, what happened I beat the entire game <laughs> okay so what's the premise of this game like what's what's going on in this game <laughs> it's ridiculous so so Michael Jordan <laughs> he uh the all-star game's coming up and, yeah and, and, and all the players get abducted by an alien <laughs> so is this space no, it's not space Wait, what? It, what it's is not, this? <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't an alien it's like this evil scientist or something I don't remember what it was that they get abducted yeah. so Michael Jordan is tasked to go rescue the all-stars so they can play in their all-star game at the end <laughs> It somewhat made me think of Threat Level Midnight from The Office because it was all about the all-star games. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so Michael Jordan goes around and he rescues the basketball players. He, uh, he has a basketball that he's constantly dribbling, and he can either throw it or there's these hoops that you can jump up and dunk at and you get, like, extra points yeah, or extra yeah, lives yeah. or something. I didn't know how to dunk at the hoop for the first, like, day or two that I played, <laughs> so I was like, what are all these hoops? That's weird. So, yeah, I played this whole game. There's different basketballs you can get to do different things. Well, different basketballs? There's, like, like one that's, like, a fireball. There's <laughs> one that's the, a gold one. It kind of goes and finds your enemy without – you don't even have to aim. It's nuts. If you want to look it up, Michael Jordan, Chaos in the Windy City, let me know. I'll send you a link. Did to... you ever see uh, Captain Planet? Yes. So was it like the basketball? Were they like the Planeteers rings? That's that, almost like, exactly Earth, what it was. Fire, <laughs> wind, like like what? Windy City basketball like creates yeah. like a little tornado. It, it all people. ties back into the windstorm. Michael yeah. Jordan Chaos in the Windy City. Uh, I don't yeah. know why that game existed, but I loved every second of it. And, and as soon as I beat it, I started playing it again. Oh man, that's great. That's pretty messed up. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> all right. So, okay, speaking, I guess, like, uh, move away from TV, but virtual stuff. Yeah. Still, uh, Easter Sunday, uh, we had something called a virtual choir. And uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I know some people on Facebook, that video's trending, has a lot of views. Uh, tell us the backstory behind that. So, backstory about that. Um, first of all, I, I participated in a virtual band, virtual choir thing, like, Several years ago, it was a band called The Digital Age. These guys, a lot of them used to play, or the whole band used to play with David Crowder Band, so I've known these guys and their music. And they sent out this thing, hey, uh, send a recording of you playing our song, and we'll put you in. So I'm on this song. If you look it up, it's called Captured by The Digital Age, and I'm playing the accordion on it. You can't really hear the accordion, but it's pretty cool. So I've seen these things before. Um, so uh, I don't remember if I mentioned it last week's show or not, but the week that everything started shutting down, I was on vacation. Uh, I was actually supposed to miss that Sunday, and we ended up coming back that Saturday night just to get back in the area and help with the live stream. And I had this idea in my mind immediately. I, don't, I guess maybe it was just from this captured video we did a while ago or that I helped with a while ago. I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool? Um, to put this together, but I, I wasn't quite sure if, if it would come together or not, or if I'd even be able to do it. And Dawn told me that Easter was coming up. I wanted to do something big here at church with our choir for Easter, and I hadn't really made the plans yet because we didn't get that far. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I started messaging uh, the worship team and the choir members, uh, so a lot of our singers, hey, we're going to work on this project. Do you want to help out? And you know how many uh, how many replies I got in the first day? Yeah, how, how many? I got zero. So thanks to all of you for giving me a little bit of a <laughs> heart attack that I wasn't going to get any videos. Hey, hey I know I never got an email. I never received anything. Did you check, check your spam? 
Uh, you know, I think I did. I, I even checked spam. Just wanted to make sure. I, okay. Yeah. Uh, it must have gotten lost. It, it got it got lost. But next time, next time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So anyway, yeah. uh, eventually people started sending their videos back in. I mean, this is quite the project. That uh, somebody asked me a couple days ago. So how many hours did it take? Uh, we'll just say several. It took several hours. Um, but it, I mean, it's a lot of moving pieces. We had, I think it was 42 musicians. 42? Yeah, and two small children that were in the, the background. My son Charlie <laughs> was sitting in, the, in it with me. If you didn't see it, you should go back and watch it. Okay, um, where, where can they find that video? Uh, I think if you get our, to, if you just click MGBC online on, on this video, you'll find it. We'll put, maybe we'll just put a link in this video too, so you yeah, can check might, it out. That might be good. It's, it's a really great video. Uh, just Thanks, man. Seriously. Uh, I'll say I got emotional watching it. Yeah. And well, yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I get emotional watching it. Show me a good Hallmark movie. I might cry a little bit. You yeah. know, something. I've never cried editing my own project. And like, like it would just hit me. I, I probably had to run through that video a hundred times, if not more, just to edit it. And like, the second time I watch it, I just start losing it. And like the 37th time I watch it, I just lose, like it just kept hitting me, man. It was so emotional. It was emotional. And okay, here's my nerdum coming out again. And okay, once again, Marvel, Star Wars. <laughs> I got Avengers Endgame feels like, you know, like the very like last scene of the movie where everyone comes <laughs> back. And see like all these people who I haven't seen in like, in like almost going on a month now, haven't yeah. seen some of these people, they're all just popping up on the screen and they're singing. It, yeah. it was Avengers Endgame feels <laughs> I, I got, but like my eyes started to water up a little bit. It was That's awesome. But seriously, this is a top notch video. If you haven't seen it, I, I just really recommend uh, this could be something, it's gonna make your day more positive. Uh, stay away from Bigfoot videos. And, yes. and, no I guess feet. Michael Jordan kills the Windy City, but this virtual choir that Ryan put together, if you haven't seen it, uh, watch it. You're going to really be thanking yourself for watching that video. Thanks, man. Yeah, it, it was, really was a blessing to be able to put it together. It was worth the long hours and putting in some extra time to put it together just because it was so fun. And it was so refreshing. I love singing with people, man. That is Our, our live stream on Sundays has been pretty cool. I think it's going yeah, really yeah. well. But there's nothing like getting in a room full of people and singing together. And our church really sings. Um, so it was cool. I mean, obviously, we have a lot of good vocalists if we can get 42. I mean, 43, because next time I'll, I'll definitely yes, have a part Maybe we'll in do a, a Daryl edit video. and put yeah, that in there. That'll, that'll be great yeah. for everyone. And, and it's pretty wild, too. I mean, I... My wife and I were talking about it, and we were saying, like, this video went kind of viral. I call it co-viral. So, like, a viral video gets millions of hits. We're up to 3,000 hits on this video. So I want to sp say a special thanks to my mom and my grandma just for watching it over and over and over <laughs> hey, again because that really helps. Can we pick a better word instead of viral right now with everything yeah, going on? true. Uh, anyway. That's... <laughs> it went missional. <laughs> that's probably, probably It got better. a lot of views. So, it, got, it got a lot of yeah, views. So thanks to my family for watching it a lot to make me feel really good about myself. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So... Uh, what else do we have? Okay, so I guess we're gonna talk about uh, some scripture right now. Yeah. So Ryan, what do you want to share? Yeah. Well, before before we we dive into the actual scripture for today, there's a video I want to show you guys. Um, so uh, my son Charlie, he just turned 11 months old t today. What's what's today? Today's the 14th. Yeah. It's, wow. We're filming on the 14th. This will come out here in a couple of days. 11 months old crazy wild kid and uh he's so much fun but when he wakes up nine times out of ten he wakes up crying and he'll just stand up on the side of his crib and lose it so until he's we get grouchy it. like like a good portion of all of us are so yeah, yeah. definitely like yeah. his dad that's for sure not I'm, not a morning person not a morning well you've seen me at staff meeting <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway anyway yeah, anyways uh so my wife laura uh looked we have a video monitor and she looks in it and uh before he went down for his nap we had put his bible a uh, little storybook bible in the corner of the crib um, and forgot about it. Like we usually don't leave anything there for him to play with. So she saw him when he woke up. Instead of crying, instead of fussing, he was just sitting in his bed reading his Bible. So I just thought it was cool. He has no idea what he's doing. But to try to start him now at 11 months, seeing value in reading God's Word um, in a time where he w could be upset is is pretty cool. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So. Um, uh, do you want to go first? Ah, uh, no. sure, I can go, go first. It. So, uh, like I said, I'm going through the Gospel of Matthew right now. It's something that just really stood out to me that I would want to share is Matthew uh, chapter 6. And this is just really just a timely chapter in my life. And maybe this will help you all as well. Uh, it talks about anxiety and, and being worried. And you have Jesus really trying to speak into the lives of the disciples uh, about that. And if you read 
the Bible, and you hear a lot of different things, but one of the top commandments throughout the Bible is do not be afraid. That, that God knows that we're fearful people, that, that fear easily grabs our hearts, and God is constantly trying to reassure us, hey, don't be scared, don't be afraid, because when fear grabs you, anxiety grabs you. And uh, in college, Ryan, did you pay attention a lot in college, like to your professors? What, the classes? Or, yeah. As needed, yeah. As, need, as needed. <laughs> so I had this one professor, and really great guy, and I, he said one quote that has always stayed with me. He said, Anxiety is worrying about things that haven't even happened yet. That a lot of the things we're anxious about will never happen in our lifetime, and we end up putting energy there that can be put in better places. And that kind of echoes what Jesus says in Matthew uh, chapter 6. And he says this in verse 31 Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat or what will we drink? Or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And a lot of us right now, we're worrying about summer. We're worrying like how much longer is this quarantine going to last? And you know, Jesus would reassure us. He said, hey, you're worried about all these future things. Doesn't today have enough trouble of its own? And as you're going through today's troubles, uh, God's grace is there. God's grace will meet you uh, where it's needed to be met for today that God's grace isn't meant for future problems, it's for what you're facing right now in your actual life. And Jesus reassures us in this promise, if we seek him first, right, then God's peace will come. And that's something that really just stood out to me going through Sermon on the Mount. And I hope that helps you out uh, as well. Yeah, seeking him first. And, and we have to do that through scripture. And uh, I know I often just forget that. Like, I know it, I know it. But I forget it, and I, I, I deal with anxiety. A lot of us do, and that, especially right yeah. now, it's just, it's everything's uncertain. Um, so that happened to me last week or over the weekend. I was just very, very anxious and thought, all right, I'm just going to make myself. I don't want to read right now. To put it frankly, I don't care what God has to say right now. I'm just too strung out. Um, if I'm being honest, that's how I felt. And I started reading through, uh, there's a devotional that Laura and I did on the YouVersion app. The YouVersion app, by the way, it's the Bible app. A lot of really good reading plans if you want to check it out. Uh, we were doing one for Holy Week leading up to yeah, yeah. Easter to Resurrection Sunday. And uh, as I read, like I, it, nothing I read had a direct application to the worries that I had. Yet those worries seemed to slip away as I read God's Word. And that was just really cool. Um, so this devotional was a, a seven-day plan that took you from like Monday through Sunday into Resurrection Sunday. And uh, each day it took you through um, some of the gospel accounts leading up to and then through the resurrection and, and uh, or through the crucifixion and the resurrection. Um, so the, the, last, uh, the last day on Easter Sunday, uh, the reading was from Matthew. It was the last couple of chapters. And Matthew um, talked about uh, you know, everything that, that you hear during Holy Week, the, the Last Supper, um, the betrayal in the garden, uh, everything Jesus went through leading up to the crucifixion, his death, his resurrection, um, everything I'd read the past couple of days in the other gospel accounts, um, still just cool to read it from different gospel accounts and, and to get the full picture. But something that for some reason it just hit me more this week than when I'd read this in the past was whenever we got the Matthew's gospel and you were just talking about Matthew's gospel too. Yeah. Um, Would that be a hint? Maybe some of you, God wants you to read Matthew. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> We're not going to speak through the camera and tell you to read Matthew, no, but but, uh, but it, it's a great it's place. A great gospel, maybe great place to start. Yeah, start somewhere. Top four gospels, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, um, it, something that hit me more so this time reading through Matthew twenty-eight than previously is uh, how how close to all these events. Uh, Matthew jumps to the Great Commission then. Um, so this is, I can't remember who wrote this devotional. I'll have to look it up. Uh, maybe put that on the notes underneath. But the devotional writer says, um, 
Let's see. On this awesome day, we'll spend meditating, uh, spend time meditating on the cross, the empty grave, and all that has been given to us. But let's also meditate on the task that this day calls us to go and make disciples. The pure gospel that Christ passed on to his disciples was the good news of a grace to be passed on, not just received. Jesus left his disciples equipped to make other disciples and to bear fruit. Uh, so you jump straight from the, the story of salvation and how Jesus accomplishes that um, through, through the cross and then resurrecting from the grave to just a few verses later, uh, his, his disciples, he, he doesn't leave them on a quick. Maybe that's the best way I want to put this. He doesn't leave them um, scrambling. They don't, they don't know what to say. Um, he, he gives them uh, uh, the, the knowledge. You know, they, they lived with him, but, but through the Holy Spirit, who's to come uh, shortly thereafter, he gives them the ability to go out and proclaim the gospel. And uh, a lot of us, if we're familiar with Scripture, we know this, but I still want to read uh, Matthew 28 verses uh, 18 through the end and 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And that's something that brings me comfort. Jesus is with me always. Um, yeah, so that's just something that brought me comfort through the, the Easter season. I feel like... Uh, I mean, I, man, I wish we were able to have church, a uh, packed church yeah. service this past Sunday. Uh, I wish we were able to have our communion service last weekend with our family, our church family. Uh, but something about being able to, to walk through this uh, on a more personal level this year has been really cool. Um, I, I, I've really benefited from it spiritually, personally. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, that's the great reassurance of Scripture that Jesus was with the disciples, he's with me, he's with Ryan, he's with you. Uh, when you're watching and maybe you're like this, man, I never feel the presence of God, right? And I think we, we all can be there. I know there's days yeah. I don't feel God's presence in my life, but if you fall back on scripture, what's always the command? Seek God first. And as Ryan pointed out, uh, one of the ways we seek God best is by reaching others with the good news uh, of salvation and Jesus and I think that's where it starts, like be involved where the heart of Jesus is. Jesus' heart is in helping people uh, and, and shaping them to be more like him. And are you part of that process? Uh, if you want to feel the presence of Jesus, be involved in the work that's close to his heart. That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. something I, I thought of uh, last week, we talked about some music recommendations. Uh, so I thought I'd make another one. Uh, Ren Collective, top-notch band. I love Ren Collective. Um, I, I'll, actually, I'll recommend two albums. First one, they have a kid's album called Sparkle Pop Rampage. Um, wait, it's wait, was, it's, it's called what? Sparkle Pop Rampage. <laughs> I thought I heard that. I just it's, wanted to make sure. It's phenomenal. <laughs> it's it's geared towards kids, but I'll be honest with you. I listened to it. I'll let you stop laughing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sparkle Pop Rampage. We, we turn it on to listen to with our son, but let's be honest, I listen to it by myself a lot. It's really good. And then they have a new album that just came out a couple weeks ago called Choose to Worship. And uh, the title track off of that, I listened to that on repeat on my way into work today. Um, just, you know, feeling anxious about some stuff. Uh, that thought of choosing to worship. You know, we, we have to, we can make our own choice as to how we're going to respond to our circumstances. Um, so actually making this conscious choice to worship Jesus in the middle of it um, is, uh, it's awesome. It's awesome to be able to do that. Yeah, we hope you, uh, look, Charlie, he's 11th month old and he chose to yeah. gain God's word. Uh, we hope you choose to do that through uh, his word, through music. And hey, that's a way better choice than watching a Bigfoot show that might uh, terrify you at night. Or so. playing Michael Jordan Chaos <laughs> in the Windy City. Yep. Yeah, but hey, this has been the Daryl and Ryan Program. Show. We'll get it right eventually. Nah, I'm not planning on it. <laughs>